In this video, we will be understanding what is how to find leftmost and rightmost derivation for a given string using sentential form or past tree. Given a question for the grammar given below with the following production rules, I have to find out the leftmost and the rightmost derivation for the string 1001 and also construct a past tree. Fine, so let's begin. Now we'll first understand the grammar. So we know that the grammar is defined by V, T, P, and S. The production rules I can identify the variable set. So here I have S has nine variable, A has one variable or non-terminal symbol B as a variable. Right? So this is my set of variables over here. Now T are terminal symbols. So here I have zero as one symbol, even one. Fine. Next, these are my production rules. That is S deriving A one. B, A deriving 0, A, epsilon. Likewise, I have written the production rule of B as well. S is my start symbol. So now let's begin. Let's find out the leftmost derivation for the string 1001. I know that I will always begin with start symbol. Because start symbol defines the language that is it identifies the strings in the language. So when I say leftmost derivation, the substitution has to be done from the leftmost variable that I have. So here the leftmost variable that I have is an A. Right? So I look for, for a substitution on A. Because it is a leftmost symbol, and I am trying to find out the leftmost derivation. So I look up the production rules of A such that the first symbol that I get is a 1. So looking at the rules of A over here, I have A derives 0A or it derives an epsilon. So I get a 0 at the beginning here, which here in my case, I need a 1, right? So what I do, I substitute the epsilon over here and then followed by this 1, B. For this A, I am substituting an epsilon. So after substituting epsilon, the rule comes up to be S deriving 1, B. So here now I got a 1 at the beginning. Right, I need a zero after that. Right, so since this is leftmost derivation, I look for a substitution on the leftmost variable. From the rule over here, I have only one variable, so I can directly substitute for B such that the next string that I get, I get is. A zero. Fine, so I look at the production rules of B. So B deriving zero B will justify my string. So I'll substitute for this B zero B. So I use up this production rule that is B deriving zero B. Fine. So proceeding further. I look for the substitution on the leftmost variable. Once again, I have only one variable, B. So I directly substitute for this B. Such that the next symbol I will be getting is a 0. So I substitute for this B. Once again, B deriving 0, B. That is B deriving. 0 using the same production rule. 
Okay. So till now I have got one zero zero as a string. The last symbol that I need is a one. So I so I check the production rules of B and I see a production rule that is B deriving one B or here. Right? So I'll write one zero zero one B where B derives one B. At the end I check for the leftmost symbol. Here I have only one variable that is B. So I look up for an appropriate sub sub substitution here. I can generate up the string 1001. So this is how we do leftmost derivation that is substituting the production rules of the leftmost variable. Now construct the pass tree for the string 1001 using the leftmost derivation. Which pass tree is a rooted tree wherein the root is always a start symbol. Okay, so let's begin. The first rule that we will use over here is S deriving A1B. Yes, I can write this S as well. A. 1 B. Right? The next substitution I have made on the leftmost variable that is A. For this, I refer the substitution that is A was substituted as an epsilon. Fine. Okay. So, the next symbol. Variable I have is V, which is the leftmost symbol. So for this, I substituted 0B using this rule. Okay. Now for this, B, I substitute 0B. Okay, the next substitution I made over here was B deriving 1B. B deriving 1B. And lastly, this B deriving epsilon was my last substitution. So now from the past three, I can see that I have constructed up the string. It is epsilon one zero zero one epsilon, which is nothing but one zero zero one. So that's how I construct the pass tree for a given string. To find the rightmost derivation for the string one zero zero one, let's begin. So I know that I have to start with the start symbol that is S derives A1 B because start symbol derives the strings in the language. Okay. And when I say rightmost derivation, the substitution has to be done from the rightmost variable. So now I substitute for the variable B over here such that I generate of the string 1001. Okay. So let's say S deriving A1 and for this B now I substitute 0B using the rule B deriving 0B. Okay. Moving forward. The rightmost variable over here is a B, so I have to look up for a substitution for B once again. So I use up the substitution of 0B once again, that is for this B I write 
D using the rule D derives zero B. Fine. Moving forward, looking at the last production rule, B once again is my rightmost variable, so I use the substitution for B. Once again, I have A one zero zero. Now for this B, I will substitute now one B. That is using the rule B derives one B. So now from the expansion over here, I can see that the string one zero zero one is this B, which is my rightmost variable. I substitute epsilon. So here I write. Using the production rule, using the production rule, B deriving epsilon. Okay, which can be written as A one zero zero one. Fine. So looking at the expansion, the only variable I have is an A, which is now my rightmost variable. So here I can substitute. For this a also an epsilon one zero zero one substituting the production rule a deriving an epsilon and this s now can be written as one zero zero one so now I have derived the string one zero zero one using rightmost derivation now let's construct up the pass tree. For string one zero zero one, using the rightmost derivation. So I begin with the start symbol that is this is deriving a one b. So I'll be looking for the next substitution that is b rightmost variable b. So here I have used b as deriving zero b. So I use the substitution B deriving zero B. So next substitution once again my variable is B, which is rightmost, and I use this substitution as B deriving zero B. Fine. The next substitution I have over to B is B deriving one B. So I use B deriving one B, and the next deriv derivation I have is B deriving epsilon. B deriving an epsilon. Okay. And then after that I have this substitution that is A deriving an epsilon. So I write A deriving an epsilon. I can say that I have derived the string. That is epsilon one zero zero one epsilon. It's nothing but one zero zero one. That is how I construct the capacity for the given string.